What we are saying is have a heart. We've got to be able to regenerate our people. There will be people who are kind, people who are cruel, but that's life. You can be bigger than about the I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I want to, to, to bring the discussion to a more intimate level now because we did say that uh, there is a trend, perhaps a disturbing trend, of women wanting to go for vaginal tightening and labia uh, correction. Please explain to me in, in, in um, uh, the decent terms <laughs> what this means. <laughs> well, it just basically means after childbirth, uh, there's a certain degree of laxity which may not be pleasurable for the patient and the partner and so they want to have uh, it tightened and literally what you have to do is cut and find the separated muscle and put it together and trim off any of the excess mucosa in the vagina. And what does this do? Does it make it... Uh, well, it's supposed to be better for sex. Does it, does it lose its elasticity or is it as good as new? It can be as good as new. Okay. It is as good as new. It is? Yes. You're speaking from experience. Uh, yes, because I performed that procedure. Okay. Yeah. So as Waffle said, this is specifically to help women who've had multiple childbirths, naturally vaginal childbirths, not C-sections, okay. that have stretched the vaginal wall so much that there is a loss of elasticity and tightness. Okay. So. Um, laser vaginal rejuvenation, which is the procedure that was popularized by Dr. David Matlock, does to the vagina what a tummy tuck does to the abdomen. We tighten loose muscles and we remove excess skin, in this case of the tummy, or lining in the case of the vagina. And the whole purpose is to improve sexual function. But there is an added benefit. If the patient happens to have stress urinary incontinence, that will get corrected as well. Okay, but what happens if she gives birth again? Ah, if she gives birth again, Will then it could stretch again. So we generally do not do this procedure until the patient has completed her family and is not planning to have any more children. I mm -hmm. see. Okay. Then what about the, the matter of labia correction? What correction is that? Beautifying the external vagina or the vulva is purely cosmetic. Um, and it's in a way, it is like beautifying the face as it ages because the external vagina ages just like the face ages. It tissues becomes lax. Yes, tissues become, become loose. Uh, become unesthetic sag. looking. You're embarrassing our young girls who are handling the cameras, you know. <laughs> anyway, go on. So there's, there's, two, uh, there's two parts of the vulva that can age and that benefit from this procedure. Um, the labia minora or the inner lips which tend to become loose and develop excess tissue. So the excess tissue can be trimmed so that it becomes more streamlined and look more youthful. And then the labia... This is looks. It has nothing to do with elasticity. That's, it yes, has, it's purely looks. all about looks. Okay. And the labia majora, or the outer lips, tend to lose fat with aging. So they, they, they actually get a little bit shriveled. So if we plump them up with fat, then they become more youthful again. So okay. if you actually look at photos of a young woman's vulva and compare them with an older woman's vulva, you can see the, the, the changes it's that are so It's just aging. like the aging face. It's, uh, it's, it doesn't sound like it's disturbing. I mean, are there any side effects that are not good for the woman having the procedure? Well, it's very important that the procedure is performed technically correctly because the vagina is right next to two vital structures. In front of the vagina is the urethra and the bladder, and behind the vagina is the rectum. So it's vitally important that when we tighten those muscles, we don't injure those structures. Mm -hmm. Okay, but other than that? Other than that, I mean, it's about... Uh, I mean, with any procedure, you have these dangers, but if... If it benefits the woman, if it benefits the partner, then it, it's... Um, well, that's why it's done. And that's and why patients request for it. To and be is done. it very popular now? I do a lot of uh, labial corrections. I think Martin does more vaginal tightenings. Okay. Uh, I don't do vaginal tightenings um, because you need special equipment, you need special tables to do that. Uh, but for the uh, labia, uh, trimming them up and making them look more youthful, I do that. Are these expensive operations? No, they're no. not really. 
you know, roughly how much would a moderately priced how much would a vaginal tightening cost um, te all in probably not your fees but generally mm. okay the range is probably eight to twelve thousand sing dollars and what about for label for corrections? Label corrections anywhere between six to eight Okay, and is it like a one-time operation or? It is. It's a one-time okay. procedure. So it doesn't need to be repeated. Yes. Okay, so I, I suppose from the viewpoint of the the partners, it, it would it's be well a worth good it. value. And it's also very important to know what aesthetic outcome the patients want. So we <coughs> often ask them to come in with pictures of uh, vulvas that they find acceptable, and whether we can achieve that for them. My goodness, I didn't know we would go this deep, but it sounds. Very interesting. I mean, it's an area that polite well, conversation well, It's about matching expectations yeah. with uh, the realization of surgery. What it, what it means is that to many women, the appearance of the external part of the vagina is important. As important as, as their face? Possibly. Yes. yes. Can be as important. Sometimes more. What are the age of the women that come to do this? After childbirth, isn't it? Yes, for, the end of for, for laser vaginal rejuvenation, it's obviously after several childbirths, but for... What, in their 40s? Yes, usually in their 40s um, and above. 50s. But for beautifying the external appearance, as Waffles will agree, I'm sure, it's a much wider age, yes. uh, age range because some young women are, are just naturally born with large labia minora and they want to change that and, okay. and improve it. It's What's like having a big nose and you want a smaller nose, Okay, basically. What's the oldest patient that you've treated? For this? Mm -hmm. Probably about 56, 57. 56, and how about you? Yeah, similar. Okay. 50s. Mm. All right. Okay, I can see the motivation from a physical viewpoint and as, as for the partner from a, a sort of visual viewpoint, but, you know, how much of an influence is this a result of watching, let's say, pornography and they see that the women that are very good looking and, and all that, and they want to be like that? Is there any... I don't think I can quantify uh, what... What are the reasons behind is. them wanting to do it? Possibly there is a relationship to watching pornography, but I'm sure there are people who haven't watched pornography but who look at themselves and say that that's not acceptable and want to change it. Yes, I don't, I don't think there's a strong link um, with pornography and m most, most of the time when the patient wants to beautify the external vagina, it's something that she wants herself. It's rare for her partner or husband to be accompanying her when, um, when she seeks a consultation for this procedure. And as we know, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, pornography is watched mostly by men, less so by women. And I think that the desire to improve the appearance comes mostly from the women. Yeah, but, but okay, in a, in a convoluted way, the woman could be doing it because it satisfies partner. The, the partner. And I've had patients like that who have come in motivated by an insult uh, given by the husband. You know, why would this your thing look like that? You know, it's uh, flappy and uh, all out of shape. And, uh, of course, that will affect their confidence, just as a woman goes to a man and says, why is your penis so small? I mean, you, you so get is psychologically there, is affected. Is that the, 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 the opposite procedure for the man, or the man doesn't really think about the women's needs? Ah, you're asking, is there a procedure for the men? And number one, and number two, whether actually men are concerned about their wives, their partner's needs, to want to do something to please well, them. Well, circumcision more. is an equivalent procedure. And that can be used for functional or aesthetic reasons. And religious. And religious. But it's different, I think. This Not one is quite. When, it's this almost one is when the, the organ becomes a bit worn. Yeah, yeah, the penis can become a bit worn too. But circumcision doesn't help. It can neaten things. I've operated on 60-year-old men doing circumcisions just to neaten up all the uh, excessive um, skin. Okay, that's, I'm going to address this to you now because it's about young girls. Mm -hmm wanting to, to have these cute eyes, and I, I, I really don't know what they are. What is it? To me, they are called eye bags. <laughs> eye, ba eye, eye bags. Eye bags are below, okay, anyway. Yeah, yeah. because they are just here, but um, just a couple of years back, it's not popular at all. It's, uh, people are getting rid of all these things under the eye, but right now, it's actually very popular. And there's even like, um, 
in terms of cosmetics like makeup, right? They teach you how to um, um, make all these uh, eye bags look more visible so that you will look more uh, innocent, cuter. Yeah. Is that the objective waffle? Oh, okay. Does it make you uh, innocent looking? To be technically correct, it's not about eye bags. Eye bags are actually projections of fat which are below the so-called... That's what I have. That's yeah. what we both have. Okay. And this is below the uh, muscle roll. And what Faith is referring to is this muscle roll which is right underneath the eyelashes. It's natural in some people. Faith has them. Are yes. you sure you haven't she had, has them. You haven't had a procedure done? No, no. God give it. All right. Okay. <laughs> so in Korea, what they're doing is they're injecting a filler into that area to, to give a plumped up appearance. Why, now, why? it goes beyond cute because there's a sexual connotation as well. When you have these cute eyes, it looks as if you've just had an orgasm. Is that what happens when you have an orgasm? <laughs> I've eyes? never had one, Kenneth, so I'm not sure. <laughs> no, you never had one of those, but I'm saying that... <laughs> but it's true that trends change. In the past, people may inject Botox to make this muscular band less visible. Yes. But right now, people are putting fillers in to yes. accentuate it. So therefore, the idealization of beauty keeps changing according to the years. Mm -hmm. And this came about because of the way the Korean. Well, it's not just looked. it's not just Korea, but it's popular in Japan as well. I just got back from Seoul this morning from a meeting where I was presenting my work on eyelid surgery, but there were whole sessions dedicated to the creation of these um, so-called cute eyes. The technical term for it is pre-tarsal augmentation, building up building up the area just below the eyelashes, as Waffles explained to create a prominent role of tissue and surgeons in Japan and Korea are not only injecting fillers, in fact they're, they're saying that fillers aren't good enough because it's too temporary and what they're doing is they're inserting tissue taken from another part of the patient's body to produce a more permanent and long-lasting result. So it has become a surgical procedure now. And so how long does it last for? Well if you use your own tissue it can last for years. So okay. I have two questions about that. In five years' time, when you go for that same conference, do you think these same seminars on heat hustle or augmentation would still be there? Or may would not, they have shifted to something be. else? Yeah. They may not anyway. be, you know. And my second question is, if you come up with a more permanent way of doing this that lasts longer, and what is cute when you're 20 years old, when you're a 70 year old grandmother, would you look rather strange? Yeah, this? especially you when you, after what you said. <laughs> 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 Quite indecent for her to look like that in permanent, <laughs> a permanent, permanent state. Yeah. <laughs> yes, then you may well want them to be removed. Mm -mm. So okay. it is it is a trend. You don't think it's defilement of the face, it's doing things to your face. It's not it's different from putting on makeup, you know. These seems to be yeah. That's a whole different issue you, which you can go into. Yeah, that's uh, Cutting your tongue, piercings, yeah. these are all that's things that are on the periphery. But oh no, there's two different things. These are two different issues. Yes, Speaking completely. Speaking as a psychiatrist, what people like Faith are seeking from the three of you is in quest of beauty. beauty. There is a certain quest for scarification or body piercing. The well, firstly, it can be trendy. Secondly, um, it's a sign of rebellion. But thirdly, a lot of times, it points at something darker and sinister, which is deliberate self-harm. Mm -hmm. I think it's time to close the program. I think that you've made a, a very strong point about the ability to have a level playing field, not so much within the Singapore is medical aesthetic fraternity, but more in relation to the threat from foreign competition and I wish you all very well in your efforts to persuade the authorities to uh, have a better appreciation of your situation and hopefully something positive can come out soon but you've got to keep, you gotta keep doing because I think it seems to be a very important matter okay gentlemen <laughs> thank you very much for coming thank, thank you, you.